Hey guys, it's Ecoasy Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos on navigation and pathfinding. I show you how to create an app mesh in previous videos, how to set up obstacles, how to set up an agent. And in this video, what I'm going to be doing is actually showing you how to set up the nav mesh, but in runtime, which means that we're going to be creating a level in runtime. We're going to be creating a navigation mesh in runtime and basically looking at some of the options that Unity provides to do so. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you the scene that I put together to give you a demo of how to create a nav mesh in runtime. So as you can see, I have something called the nav mesh surface and that component is not a component that comes with Unity out of the box. The component actually comes from a GitHub repo, which I'm actually going to show you where that is. So I'm just going to just search for Unity technologies and then we can just save nav components. And if you search for, for that, you're going to find it right on the first, basically the first link. I'm going to be putting this in the description of this video so you guys know where to find it. But basically what you'll do is you'll go ahead and download it. So you'll download the zip. You can also clone it if you like. That is up to you. Once you download it and open it up, you're going to get a folder called the nav mesh components. And then basically it's going to look, let's go ahead and go back into Unity. You're going to just drag it and drop it into your project. I put it right inside of the assets folder, which is why I have these nav mesh components. And then what that's going to give me, it's going to give me components that I can access through in runtime, meaning that I can create a script that it's going to bake the 3D models that I have and actually create a mesh navigation. And I'm going to show you the setup that I have, the scene that I have. So if we go ahead and run this game right now, you're going to see that it's going to create a level. The, it's very simple. I don't have anything, you know, nothing crazy. It's just basically tiles that are, are the Z position is changing and incrementing. And then I have an agent that is going from, it's the, the agent is actually going from point one to point two. The reason why he's continuous is because he's not breaking when he's getting into the next position. So, but that's happening in real time. One thing that I can do here, I can go into my level generator and you can see that I have a floor prefab. That is the prefab that I'm using. So if I drag the floor, you can see that that's the floor. If I go back into my level generator and I click on the player, I can also drag and drop the player. So all of these components are just basically prefabs. And then I can tell it, you know, how many floors do I have? And this means how many tiles I'm going to be stacking. So if I just want to do four, I can just type in four and hit play. And that's not going to change the way that the, the actual nav mesh gets generated. The nav mesh knows that there's only two tiles. So it, therefore it just generates a nav mesh for the two tiles. If this wasn't working, you would see basically the nav mesh getting generated and left over from the previous run. So another thing that I can do if I want to do, maybe I want to do a hundred floors because this is a very long level. And you know, this is just a minimalistic implementation. You can create something much cooler than what I have. And, but this, you know, shows you the power. You can create nav mesh, you can create agents, you can do a lot of things with the, you know, with the runtime tools that Unity provides. You can see that I have, you know, right now 50 goals and then, you know, 50 pit patrol points were created dynamically. If I go to my level generator, you can see all the ones that got generated. I can look at the tiles and then each one of these points also has a text mesh pro text box that gets incremented as I, as I create them. So let's go ahead and hit play to stop it. And I'm going to go back into the level generator. So when you add this component, which is the nav mesh component, you're going to get access to the nav mesh surface. So if you need to add that to a new, basically to a new, a new set of components, all you have to do is click on a component and then just type in nav mesh. And you're going to see the things that are dynamic that, are, that you can access in runtime. If you want to access and add a nav mesh link in runtime, you can do that because of the components that I just added. You can also do a nav mesh modifier. You can do a nav mesh modifier volume and also a nav mesh surface, which is the one that I'm doing right now. So one question that you may have is, okay, Dilmer, where do I add the nav mesh surface? So in my case, I'm adding it on the component that is going to be the parent of all the meshes that I'm creating. So if I'm going to have tiles under the level generator, then I'm going to make sure that the pairing, which is in this case is level generator, has the nav mesh surface because this is going to tell 
all the child con components and it's going to detect you know which which ones are meshes and therefore it's going to be baking the nav mesh with that information so let's go ahead and click on and double click on the level generator and i'm going to walk you through the code so let's go ahead and jump into the code and the code is is basically i have other components in here that i built for my previous videos the thing that i want you to focus on for this video it's going to be the level generator the level baker and then the patrol agent procedural so in fact what i'm going to do here is just so that you know is i'm going to add some notes in here so that you know what we're looking at today so we're going to be looking at level generator so this is going to be for the scene that i'm working on right now let me make sure that i have so it's going to be the nav mesh part seven so we're just going to do nav mesh part seven because i can see that people might get confused by what's included so this one it's going to include the level generator let me go ahead and, and finish my comments here so that everything is clean so this, this one is going to include the level generator cs which is this script that we're going to be generating looking at actually and then we're also going to be looking at the level baker that cs and then the other one that we're going to be looking at is going to be the patrol agent procedural and i'm going to show you why i call it that way and you might you might know just by the word procedural but i'm going to show you some of the implementation all right so let me let me go ahead and focus on this level generator all right, so the first thing that I have is the floor prefab. This detects what it, what I'm going to be using for the floor. I also have the player, also the goal prefab. So this is going to be, okay, if I want to use a tile for the goal, that is specifically, I can I can specify it through the inspector. The same thing with the player, the same thing with the floor. And then I also have a set of goals that I want to achieve. So in my case, I want to go through, so if I go back into Unity and I hit play, in our case, if, if I add 100 floors that we're adding, that means that I'm going to be creating about 50 different goals. The reason for that is because I'm, I'm using a modulus, and I'm going to show you that implementation here. But each one of these patrol points are going to be the goals that the agent needs to achieve. So as soon as the agent starts, it's going to start here. The, the agent next goal is going to be 2. Once the agent reaches 2, it's going to be 3, and then and then and so on. So that's what this is. That's what the goal is. And all I need is a transform because all the agent needs to know is what the position of the goal is. I also need to track the goals. The reason why I need to track how many I have is because I want to use that for the label that I'm displaying on each goal. I'm also specifying how many floors. By default, I, I did 10. I think 10 was a good number. And the other thing that, you could have, that I could have done here is I could have just done a range. That way we can get a slider. So we can just say from, maybe the minimum is two and we can say from 200. I think I like using ranges because it makes the inspector tools a lot easier to use. And then I also track how many floors we have. So if I create 50 and we have one created, this is gonna be one. If I increment it, it's gonna be two and so on. And then this is just a timer in here, two variables that I use to only construct the level every two seconds. So if I change this to one, it's gonna construct basically a tile every one second. So I just like to do that because I don't wanna do a tile every frame. I want to make sure that I'm conscious about how much I'm creating and then how fast I'm creating them. So this gives me gives me that control. The other thing that I also have is a track position. The reason why I have this vector three is because I'm I'm actually keeping track of the position of each of each tile and I'm I'm incrementing it. And that's how I can basically when I hit play, I can place them on the z-axis is because I'm keeping track of them and I'm incrementing the z-axis. And then I also need an access to the patrol agent procedural, which is going to be the agent that you see in the scene. And then when the awake method executes, I just set the timer equal to build every, because I want to make sure the first time this executes, it's going to build a tile, and then it's going to wait, you know, two seconds in our case. And then after the two seconds, it's going to wait, and then two seconds more, it's going to build the next floor. So on the update, you can see that implementation. I'm saying, okay, if the floor tracker doesn't, you know, doesn't equal to the max, so well actually in this case what i'm doing is if the floor tracker reaches the the maximum floors so if you look in here i have how many floors i have 10 right and then floor tracker it's going to be zero at the beginning as soon as i reach the max that's when i want to basically make sure that the, the patrol point is enabled the patrol agent is enabled so what i'm checking in here is i'm saying okay did i did i already construct all, all the floors if i did I'm going to make sure that I that I have a patrol agent because I want to make sure that I have an agent. Otherwise, the nav mesh 
is not going to be helpful for us. And then the next thing that I do is I check to see if I have any points already added. These are the destinations that the patrol agent knows about. So if I already added the destinations, meaning that this number is greater than zero, then I know that you know I already set them I set them up. Otherwise, if it's zero, I know that I haven't added the points for the agent. The reason why I do this is because the goals are created are created dynamically. So this is only going to happen when I when I finish building the entire you know all the tiles, which happen to be the floors, when the agent ha has been created and when the points haven't been set up for the agent. So the next thing that I do is if we're done with all these then I'm also going to call level baker instant bake level. So this is this is going to do what, what I show you, which is going to be creating the nav mesh dynamically in runtime. So this part is really, really helpful because otherwise I would need to bake, you know, in the editor and then come back here, add a tile, make some changes. So this is just, it makes it a lot easier when it comes to, you know, developing levels that are procedural. So the next thing that I do is I also enable the agent because at this point I'm baking everything. I don't want the agent to react to anything yet. Not only until until the bake has been completed, when it completes, then the patrol agent is enabled because now the patrol knows about the level. He knows that everything has been baked, so he can he can go ahead and reach the you know the set of goals that I set up for him. Okay, I think I'm speaking too fast, guys, so I'm losing my breath. <laughs> So if you guys have any questions about any of these, by the way, if I'm going too fast, make sure that you check out my GitHub page because I'm going to be putting this in the in source control and you can download it and try it on your own. So the next thing that I have in here is uh, now I, I really have the timer. What I have in here is basically making sure that I was done with the construction. Now with the timer, what I say is, OK, if the timer reach the, you know, my max, which I say, okay, if I'm building, if I'm building a tile every two seconds, the timer is going to reach, once it reaches two seconds, I'm going to be building a new floor. I'm going to instantiate a new floor by using the floor prefab that I set up. I'm going to use the track position, which is going to be my beginning position. At, at this time, it's going to be zero. It's going to be a vector zero, zero, zero for X, Y, and Z. The rotation the the quaternion rotation is going to be identity so i'm just going to set it to zero basically and then what i'm going to do that is really important is i'm going to pair in the floor to the transform which is going to be the level generator because this is important because the component that has the the actual nav mesh surface is the component that has the level generator which happens to be this transform so if you don't do this it's not going to work make sure that you do this piece so the next thing that I do is I'm going to add the agent as soon as the first floor, as soon as the index on the first floor is zero. So I'm going to say, okay, if it's zero, I'm going to create a patrol agent. I'm going to set him up by getting the, the player prefab. I'm going to set its position to be zero. The quaternion is going to be identity. And I'm going to get the component, which is called the patrol agent procedural. I'm going to set him to false because I don't want him to be running around when a mesh hasn't been baked. Basically, a navigation mesh hasn't been baked. And then I'm going to set him set him to be also a child of the pairing, which is going to be this transform. The other thing that I do that I found really interesting was I did a modulus on the floor tracker. So I'm saying, OK, if floor tracker modulus 2 equals 0, that's going to be, you know, every even number. As soon as I hit an even number, I'm going to create a new goal. And then I'm going to set the new goal by using the goal prefab. I'm using the track position on X and, and Y. I'm just offsetting Y a little bit because I wanted to make sure that the goal was a little bit above the tile. Otherwise, you weren't going to be able to see the goal. And then I'm basically passing in the track position, that's Z, and also quaternion, the identity. So all this is doing is just setting up a goal at, at the origin, and except for the times when the you know when I'm doing an offset. And I'm going to show you how I'm incrementing how I'm incrementing the Z value later on. And then the next thing that I do is I set up a new goal. So now I need the, la the label for that new goal so that I can change the label dynamically. So I'm getting the text mesh pro component that is the child of the goal. I set the text box, I increment the tracker. I do uh, basically a prefix on the goal tracker with plus plus so that I so that basically as soon as it executes, this is like incremented by one. And then I basically set the goal to be, you know, a child of the transform just like i did right above it with the other components then this part is really important because I'm, I'm basically keeping track of those goals so i add this goal to my list 
And I'm gonna show you why I do that. I also update the track position because I know that I'm done with this, with setting up all these tiles. I need to increment the position, the track position. So the only thing that I'm incrementing because I wanna keep this simple is the Z axis. So I'm incrementing this on the, on basically on the Z axis. So I'm saying track position that Z, negative the local scale that Z. So that's gonna give me the size of the, of the floor. And I'm basically gonna offset it by Z. I'm gonna increment the floor tracker and I'm also going to be resetting the timer so that I wait until we get, until the delta time gets incremented by multiplying the delta time times one and then incrementing the build timer. So this is basically gonna wait, wait, wait until we hit, we hit the max and then we're gonna be creating the, all, all the tiles and we basically go through that loop over and over and over. So I show you right here that I'm creating, I'm basically adding a goals, a goal to, a transform goal to my list of goals. The reason that, that I do that is because when I'm creating the, when I'm done creating all the floors, say that I add 10 floors and I have my agent, I wanna make sure that my patrol, my, my actual agent, the one that is running through the, through the level, knows about the points that he needs to reach. So what I do is, is because I'm, I have an array, I have a list of goals that I've been adding, now I can pass, I can tell the agent, okay agent, these are all the goals that you need to go through you need to reach, you know, if I have if I have five goals, you need to reach these five goals. So I pass in that list, I convert it to an array, and now the agent knows about those. So now let's go ahead and look at the agent and make sure that you look at the patrol agent procedural. So this is a very simple implementation, just like the ones that I did with the patrol agent. I have, in this case, I have, you know, a list of points. I have a minimum remaining distance, my destination point, the nav mesh agent, you know, this is a count so that I know, so that the level generator knows when he can start passing that information over to, to the patrol agent. I also have a method if I want to add a point. I can just say a point and then, you know, pass in a point that it's going to be added to that array. In my case, the level generator doesn't need to add it as soon as he, as soon as he gets it. And I could have done it that way. But what I ended up doing is I added a, basically another method where I can pass in an array an array of transform points, and then I can just add them with by calling a range and then pass in the array. So this implementation didn't change from what I had originally. So I'm not really gonna go through that. Just know that it is the same implementation. And if you wanna learn about it, make sure that you look at the previous video because most of this is exactly the same. The, the, the difference here is these, two, these two, different, two different methods that I added and then also this property. So now let's go back to the level generator. Now that I show you how the tiles get built, how we place the goals, how we tell the agent the points that he needs to go, now how do we tell the nav mesh that we need to generate it? So that's what this line is doing, and that's what we're gonna be looking at next, this level baker, that instance, that baked level. And by the way, I'm using a singleton, and that's why that's why I can access level baker, that instance. Make sure that you look at that if you wanna learn how that works. So now if we look at the level baker, level baker is very, very simple. All I'm doing in here, level baker is added to, let me show you the component that he's added to. If I click on the level generator, I have a nav mesh surface. So level baker needs to know about that surface so that it can tell the, the system that it needs to bake again. So what I'm saying is that I have a private nav mesh surface. And this is a component that I show you that, I, that you have to download from GitHub. Otherwise, you're not gonna get this out of the box with Unity. This is a GitHub repository that Unity provided for us so that you can access basically nav mesh information through a runtime script. All right, so we have a private nav mesh surface and it's just a reference to that. On the awake method, I just get that component, I call get component with that type, I get that type back. And then basically just a public method that is called bake level. It calls the, the build nav mesh on the surface and that's what creates the nav mesh in runtime. So let's go ahead and look at the level one more time and then I think we can call it we can call it good. So now that I have this lighter, now I could go through and say, okay, I want to, maybe I want to do 150. I want to do something really crazy. So we could do 154 and then the two seconds are cool because you can see that it's building, you know, it's building the level and it's just not happening really quickly. So it gives me an opportunity to see how the, how the runtime generation is working the other thing that I could have done too, if we go back to VS Code, let's go ahead and look at the level generator. I could have made this also serializable. And that's actually what I'm gonna do. And I'm also going to add a slider. 
and then we can say the minimum is going to be maybe the minimum is one and then the maximum we can say every every 60 seconds which i think it's crazy maybe we can say every five seconds and then we can just make this a flow that way we can we can also use milliseconds okay so let's go ahead and click on go ahead and go back into unity and then wait until unity compiles so we can get the slider for the option to build it every so many seconds so now we have these two sliders so what i'm going to do is instead of building every two seconds let's go ahead and build every let's say i think i should have done here is let's go ahead and do zero or maybe yeah let's go ahead and do zero because if we want to build everything at once we could build everything at once but what i'm going to do is i'm going to build it every maybe 0.5 seconds so half a second so we can do that and then we can see how rapidly it's building everything you can see that it's building everything really really fast because it, i changed i changed the timer property and if you want to wait longer let's say that you want to build one every three every four seconds per se you can also do that and you can see how oh maybe that's maybe that part is not working as I thought it was gonna work. Let me check and see why that is not working. And I have the timer built to that. And I have my timer here and I'm incrementing. I'm checking that my timer is greater than or equal to the build, the build every and I am setting it back to zero. Okay, else. Let me go ahead and add a debug line here just to make sure that that part is working and then build timer we're just gonna see how how fast this is incrementing and then i think that's everything that i need there so build timer is gonna start at two then we're gonna start incrementing and and i'm just resetting it down here let's go ahead and look at that okay and there we go let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens there we go and i don't have my console log so let me go ahead and pull that up i'm gonna go to general console and then what i wanted to do is just put this right here okay and let me make sure that okay let me make sure that we are doing because i didn't see anything in the log and maybe that's the issue all right so this is this is why this is not working let me go ahead and do this perfect and it's gonna get it out of the else and let's see let's see what happens go ahead and hit play and i'm still not seeing anything in the console and let me make sure okay i won't see it because i just got rid of it right so i'm just gonna do libot log and then build timer build timer and then we'll just do okay let's go back into unity go ahead and hit play and see what happens now okay so we can see that okay so i, I think it's happening way too fast so i don't that tells me that the that this is getting generated every time even though build timer is so build timer is not greater than to build every let me make, oh i see why because I am resetting the wrong variable and that's I should have named them differently. So what was happening is I'm basically yeah, I'm basically resetting the wrong variable. So I need to do the timer, not the not the build every. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be renaming those. This is going to be let's go ahead and let's go ahead and rename it. Build build let's see, build floor every in seconds. Let's do that. And then this is going to be my, I think build timer is fine for that. And I think that's going to work better. So what I'm going to say, build timer is greater than or equal to build floor in seconds. Then I know that we have reach or max. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reset the timer, not the other variable because this is the max. And then I think one thing that I could have done to make this better is, well, I wanted to change it to an inspector. I was going to say we could have make it a constant. But if you make it a constant, you can't really change it. So I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it like that. And then I think I have. I think I think I have everything I need now. Let's go ahead and go back. And I'm glad I caught that because I checked in this code before, and people were probably gonna be saying this is not working. 
All right, so we're going to be building a floor every two seconds. So let's see if this works now. We're going to say 1,000, 2,000. There we go. So that, that feels more accurate. And yeah, but that's way, way too slow. We don't, we don't want to wait that long. What I'm going to do is let's go ahead and do it every, you know, half a second. And then let's just not go crazy. Let's go ahead and do, let's do about 20 floors and see how fast this goes. And then every half a second and we have four, five, six, seven, and I think it's still too slow. We're going to, I'm going to change that in just a minute. And then we're all done. So let's go ahead and do maybe point, let's go ahead and point, point one. I think it's a good number. There we go. That goes faster. And, and I like that we can see it building. It just gives me a better idea that things are working. All right. So I think, I think this is good, good. And I'm going to call it good guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is so you guys know, I'm checking this into source control. So let me just commit it and then update it timer in let's see nav mesh par seven and then we'll just go ahead and push it and let me show you where you can find that so if you go to github.com and then delmar v and you can go into unity pathfinding essentials i already checked it in before but it wasn't correct so now you get the opportunity to to use the correct version and you can see the last it has a name of the scene that you can run and also what it does so i hope you enjoy this video if you guys have any questions please let me know all right guys thank you for watching this video on navigation and pathfinding if you guys have any questions about anything that i just mentioned please let me know in the comments also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers and also find me in patreon.com where i'm basically posting information about what i'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code thank you very much guys